Good morning, folks. Thank you again for uh, joining back another session. We are back with our CCNA initiative. Um, as you guys know, we are on chapter six of the CCNA 200-301 uh, um, of the official uh, certification guide, volume one, um, where the chapter is called basic uh, switch management. Okay. Um, and so we spoke about a lot of things in this chapter and, and very essential things prior to um, getting your device into production um, and, you know, um, on how to manage your device because you can put your device, take it out of the box, put it in production, but how are you gonna access it, administer it, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we went through different ways to access it via layer one, via layer three, right? And so we just had our lab fun day yesterday. We went over theory on Tuesday, going over how to secure remote access with the uh, protocol secure shell, right? So, and of course, to do that, of course, we need to go ahead and to work with secure shell, telling that there needs to be a layer three instance that exists, which is an IP address, right? And so, of course, I did it in the background, show you guys whatever I did configure it, but I wanted to... Um, of course, go in depth, go in, you know, talk about, you know, what it means to enable IPv4 for remote access, right? Um, which is the next section of this chapter, right? So, right? Um, so to allow, right? To allow Telnet or SSH access to the switch, right? Or router, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I have an IP address is needed, right? For functions like, you know, um, pings, like SNMP, like Telnet SSH to actually work. It cannot work without, right? Layer three existing, right? The switch, right? We're gonna, and we're gonna focus on the switch for now, right? The switch needs an IP address, okay? To handle um, management traffic has, has what they would call all of that, right? So, Let's go ahead and dive in, right? Dive in on how to go ahead and configure that, right? So if we're looking at our diagram right now, right? I know you guys heard me yesterday in our uh, lab fun day when we were configuring secure, securing uh, remote access using secure shell is how we did it is we didn't actually configure an IP address on an actual physical interface on the switch. What I did, right, is we configured an IP address on a switch virtual interface, okay? So let's take a step back, right? So we talked about, in earlier chapters, we talked about layer two, right? We talked about um, local area network, right? We talked about MAC addresses, right? And we talked about how that works and how that um, those two things that I just mentioned um, work in conjunction with the switch performing its two primary functions, okay? So there is a concept of virtual local area networks, okay? Right, and what does that mean, right? Virtual local area networks mean, right, is via software, we can create a local area network on the actual switch, right? Versus having a local area network per actual device um, per switch, right? So let's say um, we have two or three switches, right? And each switch creates its own local area network, right? Maybe for uh, first floor and the second floor in a building, right? But we have the ability to create a virtual local area network to where we can have multiple local area networks, right? Via software on the switch, right? On, just on one device, right? And so us being able to do that at layer two, right? Of course, Cisco created the ability to um, to have a layer three instance of that layer two instance of a virtual local area network, right? And that concept is called a switched virtual interface, right? Or SVI for short. Okay, and that's what you can see here, right? We have interface VLAN one, okay? And that IP address, of course, is 192.168.1.8, right? 
for that uh, for that IP address for the SDI, right? Viva and away, right? So this is how it works, right? We have that switch. We have multiple devices connected to that switch, right? But they're connected via layer two, and also they can reach a device layer three, okay? So again, so many factors come in to creating that layer three boundary and that, and that layer two, uh, I'm sorry, that layer three instance and that layer that layer two instance as well. Right, um, we have our CPU. We have the I, the OS, right, the iOS that exists on Cisco. So many of many of these things work in conjunctions to make all of this happen, and to help with basic switch management, to help with IP addressing, TCP/IP, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So that is the concept of a switch virtual interface and how to configure. Um, IP settings on a switch, right? Of course, you guys, um, if you guys look at the uh, diagram, look inside the switch, it says interface VLAN one. And of course it is, uh, it is spaced out right under it, right? That is how the command looks with, if you're configuring it in the device, right? So that's how it looks to go ahead and configure it, but let's go ahead and keep moving, All right? So you guys are probably thinking, right? At a layer two level, Right, I can create multiple VLANs, but at a layer three, at layer three, can I have multiple SDIs? Yes, you can. Okay, so right, so if you look at this diagram, right, we have VLAN one and VLAN two, right? We have different hosts, right, different PCs, right, that are assigned, right, because you configure it via layer two that are um, on either VLAN one or VLAN two, right? So at layer two, they're in that local area network, that broadcast domain for that VLAN, okay, right? But that's at the layer two level. Now that we went ahead, right, that network admin went ahead and configured at a layer two level, hey, these hosts are on a certain VLAN, right, VLAN one or VLAN two, can we have a layer three instance, right, for them as well? And yes, we can. Um, and it could be multiple instances, right? So of course, for the left, for this example, you guys can see interface VLAN one, right? That subnet, right, is going to be 192.168.1.0 slash 24, assign it to whatever, right? And of course, to the right, right, for those hosts that are on VLAN two, be it from a layer two perspective, right? That layer three instance, right, that SVI is going to uh, be a subnet of 192.168.2.0, right? Because similar to Right, similar to uh, layer two, right? These hosts can't be in be in two different local area networks at the same time, right? They can only be in one at a time, right? So the ones on the right, they're in VLAN two from a layer two perspective, right? And they can only have an IP address for um, VLAN two's uh, SVI subnet at that same time as well, okay? So let's keep moving. Hopefully this is simple enough. Um, trying to keep it high level. But again, um, one big thing that I want to understand, of course, the lab day that perceives this is going to make sense, is that even though I can go ahead and put in my commands and configure, right, which physical port, right, because these, these hosts, these PCs connect to physical ports, which are then are assigned to certain VLANs, right, if... I go ahead and create a layer two instance, right? Let's say for VLAN two and create, of course, the SVI for the layer three instance for VLAN two. And there's no physical ports assigned to it, right? That SVI is going to be in a down, down state, right? Meaning layer one is down and layer two is down. Why is that the case? Because there is no physical connection that exists right, that exists for that VLAN, okay? There's no host that's connected to it, right? So no devices can communicate with that uh, with that VLAN, okay? Let's keep going. So I wanted to go ahead and, of course, I don't like reading line by line, but I wanted to get you guys this note so we can uh, make a quick... Um, make a quick uh, tone about this and make, make sure you guys understand, right? And I'm gonna read it line by line. Some Cisco switches can be configured to act as, as either a layer two switch 
or a layer three switch. When acting as a layer two switch, a switch forwards Ethernet frames, as I shared with you guys before, taking care of their first uh, two major functions out of the three, right? They're going to go ahead and forward, right? Uh, Ethernet frames, right? Alternatively, a switch can act as a multi layer switch, which is my favorite term, right? If the switch is doing layer two and layer three functions versus a layer three, um, right? It can do that as well, right? And so if you want to go back, right, um, as, as it says here, go back and read chapter five, right, which talks about, um, you know, layer two, how switch, how switching works, right, et cetera, which, of course, in that section, it goes over uh, the three major functions of a switch. So please read over that. Um, please do that. And, of course, there's previous videos where I go over that. Um, and, of course, also. Right. If you want to, you know, dive into what um, the layer three part of uh, multi-layer switching uh, looks like, you can go ahead and jump to chapter 17, right, of volume one of the CCNA 200-301 official cert guide book, right? Chapter 17, IP routing in the LAN, discusses layer three switching in depth, right, along with multiple VLAN interfaces at the same time. Okay. All right. Let's keep rolling. So, right, so let's talk, let's talk about this and, and what all of this means, right? So we talked about already, we're able to have multiple local area networks virtually, which of course called a VLAN, right, on a device, right? And it's able to not just operate at layer two, but able to operate at layer three, right? By creating an SVI, right? And so with that being said, right, with that being said, there needs to be some, you know, there needs to be a, you know, an existence of a default gateway, right? Because once you create that SVI, right, that device, right, that multi-layer switch now becomes a host on the network as well, because now it has a layer three instance right just like your pcs right it's a host right so with all hosts right they can have an ip address they can have a subnet mass right but they need a default gateway right to go ahead and send packets right ip packets right if we're talking about layer three we're talking about um we're talking about ip packets right they need the default gateway for two things right to send ip packets to host in the same subnet right Right, they can send them to that there directly, right? But of course, the gateway is needed, and sometimes it's not. But let's go ahead and just default to what the CCNA says, right? And also to send IP packets to host in a different subnet, right? They would go ahead and send it to their local router, right? Or, aka, their default gateway. Okay, why is this important? All right, so we have right our previous diagram. Let me back up. Right. Our previous diagram, we have VLAN one and VLAN two. Right. Maybe VLAN one is the sales department. Maybe VLAN two is the engineering department. And maybe, you know, the engineering department has to communicate with somebody in sales. Right. If that switch does not have a default gateway, do you think sales can communicate with engineering? No, it cannot. No, it cannot. OK, so that's the need for a default gateway, right, to mitigate that traffic between those different subnets. OK. All right. So let's go ahead and keep going. All right. So um, I'm not going to read off here. Right. I'm going to save this for Lab Fun Day for this section. Right. But just know. As always, right, the CCNA book is going to give you a configuration checklist um, for different topics, right? And of course, this is for configuring IPv4 on a switch, all right? And of course, this is how it looks, how you configure it, right? We would have our, of course, we have our VLAN, or create our VLAN, give it an IP address. We do a no shutdown, right, because we need to enable the interface, okay? And of course, after we leave interface configuration mode, last but not least, because we want to communicate with different subnets, 
we need to make sure that we identify and we configure our default gateway, right? And I want to make an important point. If we do not do a no shutdown or enable this interface, you can configure the IP address, but layer one and layer two will still be in a down, down state, right? Meaning layer one is down and layer two is down, right? Because the interface is in a shutdown state automatically, right? I don't know if you guys remember when we talked about layer three, by default, layer three instances, whether that be a interface on an actual router, or if you create a layer three instance on an actual switch, they're going to be disabled by default, okay? So you need to make sure that you enable it. And of course, you do your show IP interface brief after you do enable it to verify that these interfaces are up, okay? Let's keep rolling, right? Here's another configuration checklist, right? But this configuration checklist, if you look at the top of the slide, is for configuring a switch to get its IP address via DHCP, right? Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, okay? I won't go deep into, um, I'm not gonna read line by line. I know you guys are intelligent people that are watching this. Um, of course, he's a screenshot of how to look on the CLI. I'm not going to get deep into this because we're going to do the same exact thing on Lab Fun Day. Okay. And of course, right, last but not least, right, um, maybe we do know how to, you know, configure um, IP addressing IPv4 and IPv6, right, on a device, right, to a T, right? But my favorite term, right, that I've learned from several mentors and, of course, my experience in the field is trust but verify, okay? So here are different commands, and we're going to do this in Lab Fun Day to go ahead and verify uh, your configuration to make sure that you have enabled, you know, um, the actual uh, SVI, the switch virtual interface, and to confirm that IP addressing exists if you're using DHCP, right? So first, we have that command, show DHCP lease. Right, it's going to show you right any interfaces that is using DHCP. It's going to show you, you know, hey, they have, you know, they have IP address that was dynamically assigned to them. Which interface it is, that subnet mask, um, the server of the DHCP server, um, and that gateway. All the information that it got, right, uh, to a limit for, um, for a specific interface. Okay. Now, if we scroll down, right, if we uh, on Emma Switch, we do a show interfaces v layer one that shows us in detail, right? Um, that shows in detail, you know, three things, right? But I want to go over the two things, right? That I want you guys to drill in your head because you'll see a screenshot like this on the exam, right? You see the first line, VLAN one is up, line protocol is up, right? Whenever you see that, right? One stands for layer one and one stands for layer two, right? Okay, we're gonna read, I'm gonna keep it simple for you and how I remember it. We're gonna read left to right. So one, right? That first line before the comma means layer one, right? So VLAN one meeting interface VLAN one, right? Is up, right? The physical part is up, right? The virtual physical part is up, right? Then if we go after the comma to the next part, line protocol, line protocol, right? That means layer two, right? And that is telling me that layer two is up and running. So layer one, layer two is, is all good to go, okay? Which means if we go to the third highlight under the show interfaces VLAN command, you can see, right, there's an IP address that exists. So if layer one and layer two is available, that means we can communicate with that interface via layer three if we have another host in the subnet of VLAN one, okay? And of course, last but not least, we can verify our default gateway by just doing a show IP default gateway if we configured it in global config mode, okay? So, um, and of course, with these show commands, um, just a quick Easter egg and tidbit, using these commands, we can also troubleshoot and uh, see maybe we didn't get a DHCP address even though DHCP is enabled. Maybe, uh, you know, um, layer one and layer two is down on the switch virtual interface. So we can verify that here. Or maybe an IP address is not assigned here, right? Or maybe, you know, 
some information from DHCP is missing. So we maybe we need to go to our DHCP server. All these show commands can be used to verify via the output that comes out. Okay. So that's it for today, right? Because again, today we were speaking about the, the main topic is enabling IPv4 for remote access, right? If you go in your book, this is roughly five to six pages long. Um, I would just want to go over the theory, especially in my words. I did not want to regurgitate. When we get to Lab Fun Day, which is going to be next Tuesday, right, from now, then we're going to go ahead and jump in and um, close up chapter. You know, we're going to go ahead and do the lab for uh, enabling IPv4, right? And then come Wednesday, we're going to go ahead and talk about the last section of chapter six, which again, which is going over some more basic switch management. Okay, and then of course Thursday, we are going to have that lab fun day, right? And close out chapter six, okay? Well guys, thank you for joining and you guys have a great day.